Hello friends, today six of my doll friends and I are coming together to bring you retro anime inspired dolls. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and thanks for watching in advance. From left to right, I'm creating a doll inspired by Ghost in the Shell. Dolly Crafter is creating a doll inspired by Sailor Moon. Telly Dollies is creating a doll inspired by Perfect Blue. The Dolly Geek is creating a doll inspired by Saint Seiya. Jackie O is creating a doll inspired by Dragon Ball. The Hatter Dolls is creating a doll inspired by Elita Battle Angel. And Stefu Dolls is creating a doll inspired by Tenchi Miya. Make sure you go check them out after you've watched my video. Their links are in the description box below. My camera corrupted a lot of footage and the earliest video I have from this project is this one. It's too far into the project to not acknowledge and not explain so I took a bit of extra footage and I'm going to try and walk you through it. These are kind of the leftovers from the project so I decided to use the WWE Superstar's body because I love their muscularity but her face wasn't as anime as I wanted it for the project so I decided to use a head from Oreka-chan. I don't see her used very much in the community so I fished another one out of my stock box and I think the head models are the same just so that I could show you what I started with. I also didn't get footage but I modded her mouth because that's far too smiley for a kusanagi. I wanted more posability for my doll's body so I'm looking at the joints of Obitsu and made to move Barbies. I've tried both Pop and Atelier and Delightful's methods for adding articulations to dolls and while I like them it's not what I'm looking for for this doll. I am decided to 3D model these. I learned how to use Blender and then printed out a couple of different versions of these joints. So there's three pieces for each joint, ones that are attached to the doll itself and then this moving part in the middle. I wanted to make the upper part of the joint rotatable so these pieces have space to add a magnet and then these pieces that are going to go on the bottom just have um, that stick as kind of an anchor. So I held the joint up next to the doll to figure out how much of the doll I needed to cut out. I tried to send to that joint to where the doll already has the bend. This way I'm gonna hopefully be able to keep the doll's proportions. I do have footage of me adding the joints so I'll be able to show you that shortly. In the collab group chat we were all quite taken by this image on the front of the manga and I knew that I'd need to articulate her chest for this. I've tried to articulate a chest before, also didn't turn out great so I accidentally pulled an obitsu apart to have a look at her insides. She's got two ball joints in there kind of held together by that piece. I had a look at quite a lot of different dolls as to where their chest joints were and found where I wanted it to be on my doll. So the bottom part of the joint needs building up because it needs to nest into that upper part of the chest so I'll be adding epoxy to that. This is the piece that I decided to make for the body. It's way more simpler piece than the Obitsu one and it won't have as much movement but this is where I'm at with my modelling skills at the moment. I drilled holes to allow the joints to go into the pieces snugly. The lower part of the joint are not as important but the upper part needs to be pretty tight it needs to be big enough to get the piece in but if it's a little bit tighter it means that she can hold her pose a bit better. I decided to use a quick drying two-part epoxy I have issues with two-part epoxy but this one was all right it, it sets in five minutes and cures in an hour and I found that bearable it smells so bad though and I'm checking with my non chopped up doll the orientation of these joints to make sure that she's not going to have arms twisted in a strange way and I'm gluing the magnets to the upper parts of the joints as well. This is going to let them twist but also hold them. For the chest joint to be stable I need to build up the bottom of the um, chest joint. I'm just using epoxy sculpt here. I'm using that cardboard to maintain a hole to make sure that that joint is free to move around. Both the upper arms and thighs were completely hollow. I need something for the magnet to stick into so I'm filling those hollows with tin foil first and then squidging a bit of epoxy in and just pushing that in with the magnet attached to the joint. Then those parts with the fixed joint, so the lower legs and lower arms, I'm just building up around that 3D printed piece j just for looks, just to make it blend and look cohesive. For the upper parts of the joints that will twist, I still want them to look like they're part of the arm, so I'm going to 
build them up but I don't want that epoxy sculpt to stick to the rest of the arm so I'm putting a piece of cling film in then attaching the magnet and then building it up with epoxy sculpt. It was really lucky I had a spare doll to be honest. Here I'm checking for arm length but later I did build the clothes around the non-modded doll. Once the epoxy was dry, I could then sand those pieces. For the parts that are removable, I'm tidying up that top edge that was kind of squished up against the cling film. And then I'm reattaching those to sand them so that I can blend them with um, the leg or the arm. It doesn't matter if I scratch up the body, she's gonna need to be really, really well sanded because I'll be painting her. Kusanagi is a cyborg great and sometimes you can visibly see the panels in her cyborg body. I really like that so I decided to add that to my doll. I was going to paint it and then decided to spend four hours in front of the TV with a nail drill and just literally etch those in. I'm going to add some greeblies to her to be able to get that mechanical look from the front of the manga. So here I'm adding magnets because I want to give her two looks because I'm way too ambitious. But this will mean that she can have the greeblies, she can look thermoptic camouflage and then she can wear an outfit that I'm going to be making for her later as well. And then I used putty to cover up those magnets and then I painted her and it was a nightmare. The paint would not stick to her body. In the end I used Army Painter White Primer which you cannot use on like the squishier plastic because it won't ever dry. So her forearms and her hands just have Vallejo White and then her body had the Army Painter White Primer and then Vallejo on top. And then I'm going through all of those ridges with a bit of pale grey just to bring them up a little bit. She has like a coral manicure, so she, she gets a little diony manicure, completely off screen. And then to make the joints work, I need to add those middle pieces and then put wires through those. I'm just making sure that the holes are wide enough to take the wire that corresponds to the joint and I'm making sure to make the wire tight in those joints which will help the doll hold poses. I'm cutting the wire a little bit short so that it'll be buried inside the joint and then I'm fixing those with epoxy glue and once that was dry I puttied over them a little bit and then touched up the paint job. I was planning on making the chest joint magnetic as well but just kept running into issues so decided to glue it. Rika Chan's skin was a little bit too pink so I'm um, colour matching her. I also modded her top lip because Rika Chan has like a soft smile didn't do a very good job of it, started the face up, decided I wanted to redo it, so sanded it back and then redid the paint. I have actually previously tried to do a uh, Kusanagi doll um, and I used a Venus and somehow managed to make her look like Kim Kardashian. This was literally two years ago and she got shelved. I'm really good for shelving projects. I wanted to go like proper anime with this and the on screen the anime adaptations are quite tame they're not really mega anime so I was influenced by the manga I'm sorry I know this is an anime collab and I'm kind of cheating by giving her a manga face up but it looked mega cute and I'm really happy with how it turned out. She's got like the 1990s anime rage face which I just absolutely love and although I am cheating and doing a manga inspired doll I did decide to make her a look that does cross over into standalone complex. There are so many different outfits that Kusanagi wears but this is one of the few that has a couple of iterations. To be fair she has like different looks for like the thermoptic camouflage and then she has different urban combat wear but yeah the outfit I decided on I just love it so 80. So this is the look that I'm trying to capture. I love the artwork in this manga. I, I don't think it's cell shaded it's a lot softer but this is the look that I'm trying to give her. She does have brown hair and like pinkish eyes in this but I'm going to be going purple hair and red eyes because for me that's what the major looks like right and the, there's so many different versions and all of them are 
correct right so i'm just gonna smush them together a little bit so something that mega surprised me is that ghost in the shell is not popular in japan it's not even known in japan like i can remember talking to one of my co-workers about it and they were like what and so i googled the japanese name and they were like what like literally had no idea completely flew under the radar there's so many things that are popular outside of japan that in japan are like either mega 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 cult niche type things or just not known at all and this is one of them i think like it, it's such a strange property as well and it's it's so special and the fact that it's so tied to the matrix as well and i absolutely love the matrix whoa matrix 4 coming soon mega excited it, it just had a huge impact on so many people but yeah not popular in japan and honestly it's, it's very strange just the whole anime thing really like sailor moon was popular but i think only because crystal came out and like the things that are popular are literally the kids cartoons so things like Ampa man is mega popular doraemon i remember like seeing like the plushies and stuff but not really the the anime at all puri kiwa is huge and then some things like the adults watch that there's like is it like crayon shinchan and tibi maruko like they're popular but other than that it's like not a huge it's not as big as you'd think it would be like while i was there as well i think um shingeki no kyojin uh attack on titan was it was pretty popular so all the convenience stores had like prizes they do this like raffle thing i did you've got to let me know if you want to know some weird stuff about japan because like having been back for a year now like there are so many weird things that i remember and miss or like look back on and i'm like oh yeah that's actually kind of weird but i got used to it you got you got to let me know if you want to hear about them because you totally can talk about those but yeah so shingeki no kyojin was popular but then like once the series has ended it's kind of gone and and disappeared so like naruto was kind of gone like bleach i feel like ended while i was there and that was gone one piece was popular and was really popular with the kids but i think yeah i don't know like it's not on tv as much as you think and like i can remember people wanting to see see the weird um like game shows and they're not on tv as much as you think either how weird anyway i'll talk a little bit about the face up um, i think this face up i mm, so I don't work in acrylic paint. I find acrylic paint a very, very difficult medium on doll scale. It takes a lot more skill to get a clean face up that's simple and looks really good with acrylic than you'd think. Like it, the artists that do it well make it look so easy, but it's really, really not. Th this is one of the reasons I would never recommend acrylic to beginners. It's awesome that you don't need to use a sealant, but it is not very forgiving at all so I decided to use um, pencils it's what I like and actually I've recently started shading more with paint pencils than with pastels because I feel like I get a better color payoff and recently I've been getting quite a good blend with it as well I wasn't sure about what to do with the grays of her eyes um, I ended up doing uh, top and bottom I, I did keep looking at some other anime dolls and like um, literally just anime faces as well i kept her lashes graphic i've not drawn her waterline um just because I, I do want to keep her very anime and i don't think that like a waterline doesn't feel like something super anime i love how she looks no pupils but totally not kosher she, she's got to have the pupils and then i'm i'm highlighting the bottom of those as well I'm packing on uh, pan pastel here for a highlight and then knocking it off. Uh, it will be taken down further by MSC anyway, so not a problem. I do want to try and remember to like put a note of when I've sprayed in because I think I think I only did three layers on this, which is quite low, but the head was really hard, which means that she takes colour a lot more easily. Um, but I think it would be quite an interesting thing to in include um, because I don't think the people starting out know how much or how much to use. Do you know what I mean? 
like I often use it to kind of save my work or if I want to build up more color and I can't anymore I gave her like line highlights on her cheeks because I saw that in the manga and I think that's super cute she is actually way cuter in the manga than she is in the show she's pretty badass in the show she's badass in the manga as well but she's quite cutesy and ditzy and goofy and stuff I did her eye highlights literally exactly the same as the manga and then she's got glossy lips so I um, like kind of drew the gloss shines on. Recently I've been watching a lot of Anastasia Customs and Sugar Charm Shop and they both use um, viscose fibre for hair so I wanted to try it. I'm using Palm Violet from Viscose Heaven. It feels soft and floofy and what I found actually was that it was very much like brushed out yarn but pre-brushed out. This is pretty affordable. I'm going to leave the links in the description for this company. I have problems with my hands. For me, brushing out yarn I find painful and time consuming. So for me, I think this is something that I'm going to do going forward. This took me maybe a fifth of a bag to give her a little Karen bob. Oh my gosh, can you believe she has a Karen bob? Once the hair was all glued, I put this plastic bag over it with some tape just to make sure it had flattened down. And then I used a face razor and tiny embroidery scissors that are mega, mega sharp. This is a real good tip for tiny doll haircuts, super sharp embroidery scissors um, to give her that um, angled bob. I'm also giving her that big poofy 80s fringe because she's way too Karen otherwise. Please excuse the continuity here, we're going back in time a little bit to before she was painted. So now I'm going to make the greeblies, these are like the kind of meaningless machinery parts that make the thing look more complicated really. I'm starting with fabric and I'm painting glue on that to stiffen it to give a base to sculpt on. I decided to build these up using Sculpey, so I'm adding some liquid clay and then adding kind of snakes and smooshing shapes on. It's kind of following what's on the manga cover, but also just kind of made up to make it look mechanical. This wasn't the best choice of material because it is quite fragile, which I didn't think about, but I figured out a way to strengthen it later. If I went back, I'd probably use something else i've got some cos clay now actually pretty excited about that so that's more flexible so I'd, I'd probably try using that so once these were baked i went on top of them with more liquid sculpey and then added more detail i designed some like actual greeblies in blender and printed those out so these are I don't know what what are they supposed to be like fuses or semiconductors or something I don't know these these cylinder things and then I'm just gluing those on with some more epoxy glue trying to make them symmetrical then I painted all of them black you can see on that top piece there I added some rhinestones I picked that tip up from studs and studio uh, to use them as rivets and they actually look pretty impressive then i'm kind of going over them with a light hand it's not quite a dry brush um with silver and then these thingies were kind of a greenish color so i'm going back over those with like a green and, and gold mix the pokey bits i think are lights but i'm just painting them red and then so to strengthen them I decided to use Acrogel and I'm just squishing that on and then squishing it around with um, a brush covered in alcohol. It does lose the detail from afar but when you're close up you can see it still because it, it's clear but this was just necessary to keep these pieces strong enough for it from snapping in half. Everything got a coat of gel top coat barely in frame i'm so sorry again for strength but also for shine
So here are those pieces completed. Then I made a pencil skirt. Pretty simple, regular pencil skirt with a slit up the back. In her uniform, she's wearing tights. Um, she, she also needs to wear these because of the body color that I've given her. But I didn't want these to have a seam on the inseam, so I drafted the pattern so that the seam would be up the back of her leg, kind of like pinup tights. I made the white shirt, it's very fitted with quite deep darts. I wanted to make it front opening, but it, too tricky decided to make it back opening and have like a fake button placket in the front i didn't add sleeves and instead used a net to face and then turn the arms i love this net we'll talk about it in a future video because this is real good for doll clothes and then made this little tie and hot glued it to the shirt i also added like knickers to this to make sure that it like holds down under the skirt but also holds the tights up and you might say Lee isn't all of this cheating and I would say absolutely it's cheating and I do it again I tell you then I made her jacket honestly this was one of the most difficult things I've ever made in my life I wish I could explain to you how I made this thing but even looking at the footage it made absolutely no sense to me and I have no idea how I did it so sometimes when I'm working through a project I feel a little bit like I just get in a zone drift off do my thing and then arrive at this thing so I added pockets I made these tiny little medals for above the pocket on her left breast pocket funny thing the English manga is literally just flipped so her medals are on the wrong side. I decided to channel my inner Poppet and Tellier and use Warbler to make her shoes. I find this really difficult I think a lot of people think it's easy because she makes it look so easy if you want to know how to do it you got to go check out Poppin she's the warbler shoe queen once I had kind of the foot part the upper I don't know the foot part of the shoe done I use like mega thick barbecue skewers and a bit of epoxy to build up the heel And then I just painted them black with acrylic paint. Kusanagi's got a gun and because I planned this project so long ago, I bought these from Yodobashi Camera in Osaka before I left. And I'm gonna make this gun for her. It goes together super easily, no glue. Um, and then I just painted it black and kind of brushed it with silver because um, with black a lot of the detail was getting lost. I used Sculpey Gloss Glaze to glaze her lips. And then I reattached her head. I don't want to mess her hair up, so I'm putting her head into a plastic bag and then dunking that into hot water to soften the vinyl. 
I've also trimmed down the neck peg both the length and a little bit of the width to try and make it easier to get her head back on. Then I glued the top part of her chest joint. And I added her limbs back. I'm just checking the movement and posability because this is still a prototype. This is the first time that I've had the joints completely glued and finished on a doll. Her shoulders and hips are pretty stiff, which did become a bit of an issue later. So just again, um, testing her posability. And honestly, I'm really quite impressed with what I achieved with this doll. And so then I dressed her for her military photo shoot. The tights are way too big, but I, I thought I could get away with it. So I, I gave it a try. The jacket was a bit of an issue combined with her shoulders. Um, there's not enough movement here and her arm snapped. I decided to drill around the wires to try and remove those wires and replace the middle of the elbow joint. The resin is quite brittle so I decided to add some flex resin in with my regular resin and then reprinted those elbow joints. I also used an alcohol wash resin because they tend to be stronger than the water wash resins. Then I added new wires and touched up the paint. While all of this was drying, I decided to redo her tights. I redrafted the pattern and made it quite a lot smaller and they came out a lot better. I also added a waistband. I don't usually do this, but I just used a zigzag stitch and some elastic that I've been using for masks. Putting this um, jacket on, I put her arms into the jacket separately before putting them into the arm sockets. The, the shoulders are so very stiff and they don't have a great range of movement. I think that's why the elbow took the strain in this. The final piece that I needed to make for this costume was her belt. She has a shoulder belt, which I made from some strips of leather. I made a closure using steel wire and a magnet. And added some jump rings to look like belt buckles. And finally, I added her wobbler shoes. So how do you think I did? Let me know what your favorite Ghost in the Shell property is. Thanks as always to my wonderful patrons with a special shout out to Camilla. You're all awesome. Thank you so much for supporting me. Don't forget to go check out the other artists whose channels and videos you can find in the description box below. Please interact with the video by liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing. That really helps me out in the algorithm and I really appreciate it. Thanks in advance for that. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.